Today, I'm gonna to be showing you exactly how you can get control of your drinking in 30 days or less on your own, and we're gonna give you the full entire guide. We are going deep in this video today, and it will get you the outcome that you want. If you watch this video from start to finish, you're gonna have exact steps to follow, how to overcome the hardest obstacles that you could face on this journey. I'm gonna show you everything. This is something that I've applied in my own life. I've not drank for over five and a half years. I didn't use AA, therapy, willpower, rehab, I used none of that stuff. I've made over 600 videos. I've had probably over 10,000 people reach out to me or leave a comment on the videos saying that this channel has changed their life and changed their relationship with alcohol forever. And I've worked with hundreds upon hundreds of people in a coaching program. So the stuff that I'm going to share with you in this video today will work for you as well. Why the heck not? Is it for everybody in the planet? No, but if you're motivated and you're at least willing to see alcohol in a different way and change your perspective and change your worldview, then please watch this video because ooh, it's gonna be powerful. We are going deep today. Now, the first thing I wanna start off by saying is there's a quote by Abraham Lincoln. He said that, if I had six hours to cut down a tree, I'd spend the first four sharpening the saw. In other words, preparation is everything. Preparation before committing to the action is the most important thing. And that's why this video is critical for you. Now, really when it comes to stopping drinking, there's a totally right way to do it that gets a result, that keeps you happy, that keeps you motivated, and there's a wrong way to do it. So before I show you how to stop drinking alcohol in 30 days or less, I need to talk about the wrong way of stopping drinking. Because if you can understand the wrong way of doing things, then you won't make those mistakes. Because there is a wrong way, and there's a way that will yeah, you might not drink, but you're gonna be miserable. You're gonna feel like you're missing out. You're always gonna to wanna to be going out and partying, but you're just gonna to have to resist and stay home and say no to friends. You don't want that life. I don't want that life. Nobody wants that life. So to, before we get into the exact steps on what to do, let's just wind it back a little bit. When I was about 21 years of age, I didn't finish like, I finished high school, but then in England, after high school, you do something called A-levels. So it's a bridge between high school and university. And it's a two year thing that you do. And then you go to university, Americans would know university as college. So I didn't do that. But then I wanted to go to university a little bit later in my life. So I had to go and do what's called a foundation degree. So I went to go and study science. And uh, yeah, I went to go and do this foundation degree because I thought I might have wanted to do something like exercise science and gone to study at university. Didn't end up doing that, long story short. But I was living in this place called Preston and I was studying this foundation degree. Now, to support myself, um, you know, I got a job. And I got a job in this restaurant. And it was a, an Italian restaurant and it had a bar next door to it. So sometimes I'd have to work in the restaurant and be a waiter and do all that stuff. And then sometimes they'd say, Leon, can you work in the bar today? I mean, at this point, I'm like, I'm quite young. I'd already been drinking like a, you know, binge drinking and creating quite a lot of chaos in my life. I'd already tried AA at this point in my life. So I was already, you know, already a little bit out of control. Well, not a little bit, but you know, when I went, went to work at this bar, um, you know, this was a, uh, I'd never really been in an environment like this. And when you know, you're know you starting work at 10 o'clock and then by 12 o'clock, there's the same faces coming in every day. They sit there, they order this weak alcohol, like this 3.5 or 4% beer. They'll drink 10 beers all day, go home, sleep early, wake up early, and then just go through the cycle every single day. And it, you know, it was, it was strange because it, after seeing that and being exposed to that again and again and again, that started to feel very normal. I just started to think, well, that's what men do. You know, we drink 10 pints and, and that's it. Now, there were a cool group of people at this bar, and God bless them, you know, I really hope that they they found peace now and they've, you know, hopefully they're still not doing this. And all I can do is pray for them and, and hope that they can, uh, hopefully that they, they change. But, you know, they, they used to come and they would drink like, you know, 10, 12 pints at night, strong beers as well, I'm talking like 6% beers. And uh, they'd drink like 10, 12 pints, they'd get absolutely smashed, they'd start drinking whiskeys and, and you know, they were just getting absolutely hammered. And funnily enough, at this point as well, that, like I was, I was being surrounded by this. They kept buying drinks for the bartender, you know, and I'm behind the bar. And, you know, it was all like, it's all a bit sad looking back. Like grown men coming in, getting absolutely hammered, walking home, making a fool of themselves and doing it all again. And I even remember when I was, I was there, I've been exposed to it this much that, oh man, it's, it's, it's cringe to say, it. I hate to say it, but I remember I went home and I bought like a 16, you can buy like crates of beer. Um, so I bought like a 16 pack of Fosters, it's some Australian beer. I remember I went home and, I, and I'm like, I don't know, 23, 22, on my own, I drank the entire case of beer in one night, in like three or four hours. I just drank the whole thing because I thought, yeah, that's what we do. They're all doing it. 
Why shouldn't I do it? And I did that like four or five times, drank the whole case of beer. It's like a 23 or 24 year old. It's, it's embarrassing. But anyway, I actually remember, oh man, I don't know whether to say this, but I'm, uh, I actually remember wet in the bed. Like I just drink it all and, and just, oh, how embarrassing. I cannot believe I just said that. But anyway, who cares, right? It's in the past now. We've all made mistakes. It doesn't matter. Anyway, one of those individuals, he, um, he, he once came in and he was like, I'm not drinking, right? I'm, I'm quitting alcohol. I've, I've had enough uh, and I'm going to take two weeks off. And it was, and I'm like, that's strange. Why do you want to do that? And he's like, you know, I don't really need it. I'm not the kind of guy that, that needs it. I can just take time off when I want. I'll just reset, give my body a break and then get back on it. And it was like, it was almost like a coping mechanism. So we didn't really need to question his drinking too much. If he could take two weeks off, then he could continue to lie to himself that his drinking wasn't an issue. And I, to this day, I'm, I, you know, I'm, it's rare that I meet people that drink as much as they did, right? They were just completely out of control. And they were like, you know, 45, 50 year old grown men. Anyway, so I remember like every time that he'd come to the bar, uh, I actually liked the guy. I'm not, I'm not going, you know, I'm not, I don't want to sound like I'm talking bad about somebody. I'm just explaining my observation to hopefully help you. And obviously I'm not naming him. Nobody's ever going to know who he is. So it's all good. So, you know, he would come to the bar and he'd sit there and he wouldn't drink. He'd get like a lemonade or something or an orange juice. Um, his face, it was like death. He just was miserable. He did not want to be there. You know, this was a guy that was usually very sociable, buying people drinks, laughing, joking. And he'd just sit there with his arms folded and his head down like that. And it was bizarre. It was like a, some, some he, oh, uh, what do you call it? Like split personality or something. It was really weird. And then, you know, what do you think happened on day 14? Right? If you, if you told, here, here's, here's how it goes, right? If you told yourself that you weren't going to eat double chip, like double chocolate chip muffins for two weeks, and you got to day 14, could you go day 15, day 16, day 17? Easily, right? You could easily do that. If you told yourself that you, I don't know, you weren't going to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of an example now, but like, if you said that you were going to drink like a, anyway, anyway, you get the point, right? You get the point. So <laughs> you get the point. What do you think happened to him on day 14? Do you think he was like, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to give it three or four more days. Absolutely not. It was like, finally, finally, I can drink again. And then boom, straight back to what it was like before. Now, why, is, why am I saying that this is the wrong way to do things? The reason why is because he never changed his perception of alcohol. He still wanted to drink and went the 14, those 14 days, he spent the whole time wanting to drink. So every day that went past, alcohol was higher and higher and higher and higher on a pedestal. So by the time, by the time day 14 came, that was it, blowout time. I don't know if you can relate to that story. I certainly can because the reason why I'm able to tell that story is because I've done that exact same thing as well. I've stopped for three months, I've stopped for a month and then boom, blow out. So the wrong way to do things is to resist. It's to fight the urge. It's to just say, I'm gonna stop for two weeks and I'm just, I'm just gonna get through it. I'm gonna grit through, I'm gonna use my strength, my personal willpower. That is the wrong way to do things. When I stopped drinking alcohol, it required zero willpower. I didn't even have to try because I changed my perception, which we will get into when we start talking about the right way of stopping drinking. I changed my perception, I made a decision and I stuck to the decision. It was that simple. And going back to this wrong way of stopping drinking, and we're getting there, don't worry, bear with me. But what that individual did at the bar is he was really relying on pain. The pain, he, you know, alcohol was causing him pain, clearly. You know, he was behaving like he was being crazy. He was drinking way too much. He knew what he was doing. It caused him pain, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to get him to change. We need more than just pain. Pain is helpful. Pain can get the ball rolling, but it's never enough. If pain was enough for somebody to stop drinking, after your first hangover, you'd never drink again. There needs to be more and it needs to go deeper. You can't just use pain and motivation and willpower to stop drinking. It needs to go to a totally new level and that's what we're gonna start talking about next. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share three recommendations and then we're gonna start talking about day zero, day seven, day 14 and so on. So the first recommendation that I've got for you is before we do anything, is I want you to write down a pain and pleasure list. This is a game changer. What you want to do is think about alcohol. You want to write down a pain list. So you actually want to literally get a pen and paper, pause the video if you've got to. Don't be the person that's like, yeah, I'll do it later. I'll, I'll think about it and then I'll write it down. Get the pen and paper, right? Don't be that person. Write down the word pain at the top and then write down all the pain that alcohol has caused you. For me, it's broken relationships. It's health scares, throwing up blood. It's not living up to my potential. 
It's wet in the flipping bed. I cannot believe I told you that, but whatever. It, it, you know, it's these stupid things, right? Like all the bad things that alcohol is causing in your life, write them down. Write as many as you can down. Write down 20 bad things about alcohol if you can. You know, for you, maybe it's like you don't have the energy to play with your kids. You're looking in the mirror and you're not happy with the person that's being reflected back. You know, you might have got a bit of a stomach. Write it down and go deep. Maybe for you, you just feel like a loser. Like, I don't know, just, just go as deep as you can. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to, to belittle you by any means, but it'll be helpful for you to go as deep as you can. Write down the pain list. The next thing you wanna do is write down a pleasure list. If you remove alcohol from your life, what great things could happen? I knew for me, it could have meant that I, well, it, it did happen, but at the time when I was, you know, if I was writing this list, I would have wrote things like, I could start an online business. I could travel the world. I could get in the best shape of my life. I could get into a new relationship. Now all these things have manifested because I don't drink anymore, but these are the kind of things you wanna start writing about. Write about the pleasurable things that can happen in your life when you remove alcohol from it and come up with as many things as you can. That's the first recommendation. The second recommendation that I've got for you is before embarking on the journey, before saying today is day one, is you wanna research. You want to spend time learning about alcohol. I've got 600 videos on this channel. I have a coaching program, I have an online program with a course where we go super deep into things. If you want details on that, just go to soberclear.com or click the link in the description. You can watch other channels, right? My message might not be exactly what you need to hear. You might need to do something else. You might need to go to AA meetings. I don't know what you need. You should know yourself better than I know you. But you want to spend time researching, going deep, and really understanding what alcohol is. When you boil it down to its core, all alcohol is is ethanol. That's it. it. There's nothing else to it. But you need to spend time basically peeling back the layers, breaking it down from first principles, right? Like de almost reconditioning your mind to see alcohol for what it is before you got conditioned to see it as something beneficial. You want to do this before you make the decision to start the 30-day thing, but you want to do it the whole time. Right? You want to continually educate yourself until it clicks. Because I'm telling you, one day it'll click and it's like you just see alcohol in a different way. That's happened to me. It's happened to thousands of people that watch this channel. It's happened to most of the clients that I've worked with. I'm not saying it happens to everybody, right? But the vast, vast, vast majority of people that I work with this happens to. You want to spend time researching alcohol. And the third recommendation before we go into the days is you want to spend time building that vision. So that pleasure list that you've just written, that's really the start of a foundation. But you know, if you can transport yourself 25 years down the line or 10 years down the line, I don't know how old you are. If you can transport yourself down the line and start building a vision of what you want your life to look like, you've got something to work towards. You're not just using pain anymore. You're using a prospect of a better future. That's what you want. Think about it. Think about the beautiful home, right? Think about being financially independent, having grandkids running around, playing, you know, transport yourself and build that vision. Spend as much time as you can building a vision to work towards. It will be a total, total game changer. So now let's go in to day zero to 28. Let's talk about a 30 day game plan. So before day one, before making the decision, right? You wanna do what I said before. You wanna spend time researching, watching this channel, maybe buying some books, buying some courses, getting a coach or whatever. Just spend some time, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 hours, just diving deep into the problem. It'll be, it'll just make everything so much easier. So just please make sure to do that. Now, when it comes to day zero to three, you can expect these first few days to feel a little bit strange. It does for everybody. You feel a little bit rough, a little bit like you've got a bit of a flu, like something's not quite right. Uh, and if you are worried about withdrawal, like, you know, if you've been drinking big time, right? If you've been drinking a lot where you're afraid of the withdrawal, then seek medical help, right? Just, just don't be afraid to ask for help, seriously. Um, but yeah, the, the first few days can suck. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not gonna say that the first few days are easy, uh, but I'm telling you, any pain that you experience or any discomfort that you experience, comp it, it's tiny compared to the pain that alcohol causes. So just expect that. And really, in these first three days, it's really important to journal. Now, what you wanna do is you, is you wanna spend time journaling and you wanna, it's gonna sound negative, but it will help you, but you wanna spend time thinking about the pain that alcohol caused you and what can be really beneficial is you write about the pain. Because what can happen is after 30 days of not drinking is you can forget about the pain. And that's when that voice comes back to your head that's like, let's just have one or two, let's go back to controlling it. You, you know what I'm talking about. But you want to spend some time writing about the pain. So if you're ever feeling a little bit weak or you're starting to say, oh, you know what, I might just have a few again, you can always go back to refer to that journal. So those first three days, write about the pain. Now, when it comes to days three to seven, this is important. Now, you've kind of got two options, right? You could sit around and feel sorry for yourself and hide and change nothing and just like 
you know, order junk food and watch TV all day and say, well, at least I'm not drinking. But listen, come on, you're better than that. I know you're better than that. You know you're better than that. You don't need to do that. What you want to start doing is as fast as you can is start implementing positive changes, nutrition changes, getting in healthy, nutritious food again, refueling your body, rebuilding your body. It's been being poisoned for years, so you want to start getting good fuel back in the body. You know, get some workouts in, 20 minutes, go for a walk, get in a run, get a couple of kilometers down, go for a workout, do some CrossFit, do some strength training, whatever. But you just want to get the food in, get the exercise, start getting active again, and do some positive things for yourself. And you might want to start thinking about, you know, sleeping better, trying to optimize your sleep, going to bed at the same time, waking up early. Just really try and spend this time starting to get some positive momentum. That is the most important thing. Now, when it comes to day seven to 14, you, you really wanna just keep stacking these wins. So one great thing that you can do, and this is something that I've been doing over the past few days, uh, is every night, me and my girlfriend, we're talking to ourselves, what are the wins today? Even if I have a terrible day and everything goes wrong and, you know, I don't know, it, it rains when I go outside and if I get my umbrella or, I don't know, the exercise class is full or the gym is full and I can't squat and I gotta, you know, all these bad things can happen, but there are always wins every day. So you wanna start stacking these wins and one good habit there is every night you reflect on your day and you talk about the wins and you wanna keep stacking these. You wanna just stack the wins, day seven, day eight, day nine, all the way to day 14. Positive wins, positive wins, positive wins, positive wins, again and again and again. Another great thing you can do at this period is you can get yourself out and about and get around friends and socialize without drinking, but get around alcohol. Because if anything, that strengthens the resolve. And don't forget, also during this day seven to 14, you wanna still be educating yourself on alcohol, but get yourself out there, socialize. And I just wanna have a quick caveat there. If you have done the work before making the decision to stop drinking, and you feel 100% confident about your decision to not drink, you know that you're not gonna drink, you've had that full mindset shift, that flick of a switch, you know that it's done, you know that it's in the past, you do not need to spend time researching alcohol. I know I make videos about not drinking, but I don't, I don't think about it anymore. You know, the first year I drank, I didn't read anything. I just stopped drinking and then put it behind of me because I knew for sure that alcohol did nothing for me and I made an all-in decision. So I'm not saying that you need to spend time researching alcohol. You do need to before you get into that state of mind, but maybe day seven, you're like, that's it, I'm done. That's okay, all right? Now, day 14 to 21, what can happen at this point is you have just completely normalized to the feeling of not drinking. All the bad things have gone, your energy's feeling better, you're feeling on fire. You've got to be careful here because this is when you can start justifying, well, do you know what, I could just have one or two and still do the 30 days. Don't do it. Think about the pain. Think about the stuff that we were talking about day zero to three where you were journaling about the bad things that have happened as a result of drinking. Don't forget that. So just don't forget why you're doing this. Keep stacking those wins, stack, stack, stack. That's all you wanna be focused on is stacking wins every single day and keeping alcohol out of your life. Now, when it comes to the final week, day 21 to 28, yeah, sure, you wanna keep stacking those wins, but here's what you don't wanna do. I promise you, this is gonna derail so many people, but not you, because you're watching this video and I'm gonna warn you. What you don't wanna do is do what that individual did that I spoke about at the beginning of the video. Well, it's been 14 days, time to have a blowout. Don't get to the end of 30 days and then think, right, I've done 30 days, it's an achievement, I can finally reward myself with a drink. Madness, right? The thing that you stopped doing because it was causing you pain is now a reward. It makes no sense. Well, it does, it does make sense if you see it as drug addiction, but anyway, that's a different story. That's, we won't go there in this video. But do not reward yourself with alcohol after you get to day 30. Keep it going. Because if you've truly changed your perception and you made a decision to stop drinking, that, that thought won't even go into your head. It never goes into my head. The chance of me adding alcohol back into my life. I mean, I swear on my life, you can even test me on this. Offer me $100,000 to drink a pint of beer. Not a chance in hell. Not a chance in hell, I would never do it. And if you don't believe me, offer it to me and you'll see. But this is what I'm saying, like my mindset is so clear. And I also know that the potential upside of staying a non-drinker for the rest of my life $100,000 over the course of a lifetime is nothing. And I know that if I drink one drink, I'm not, I'm not rolling that dice. I'm not even risking it because I know the pain that alcohol has caused me. I've never forgotten what it was like to be a drinker and neither should you. Anyway guys, hope that was helpful. If you go to soberclear.com, you can learn more about the program. And if you click the video on the screen now, you can learn some of the early warning signs that alcohol could be killing you.